G'day! Welcome back to The Retribution Show. I'm the Great Southern Gamer and today I'm going to be talking about one of Australia's most important legacy titles, Aussie Rules Footy. It's based off a contact sport that's been in Australia now for over 100 years. To begin, let me tell you a bit about the culture. So grab a beer and a pie and let's get started. AFL in the 90s was great. The energy and pace of the game kept you on the edge of your seat. Superstars like Gary Ablett, Tony Lockett, Severio Rocker and more sold tickets and shocked the crowds with incredible marks and ridiculous goals. Just check out some of these screamers. That is that full body extension. Looks like a majestic great white shark breaching from the water. And just look at this bloke. This man casually stands approximately six feet in the air on the other bloke's shoulders. And I step over you with my gaiters on. Anyone remember the Kazali Classics? A collection of cards showing off all the greatest marks of all time. These were my favourite types of footy cards. They exemplify the pre-2040 years. Best there ever was and ever will be in my opinion. The commentators were always fun to listen to. Rex Hunt. Just like a fantastic cup of Maxwell House coffee. It gives you a nice hey, old pump there, mate. Hey, Rex, if I, my dream would come true at the chow shop, it would be a, a double lemon chicken followed oh, no. by a double banana fritter. Okay, we come there and you tell me, you want a lemon chicken and a uh, double uh, lemon chicken and a double banana fritter? For a double lemon chicken! Yes! Yo, beauty! Bruce McAvaney. Picks himself up and dribbles. And even when Cyril dribbles, it's a beautiful thing. Yes, now it gets really interesting. Two bouncers. He'll caress it down someone's throat. And he does. The most watchable players in the competition. What a delicious young player he is. He's still on the arm. What a delicious young player. The fans are bloody crazy. I don't think you'll find a fan base that's more animal than man anywhere in the world, with the exception of ice hockey and soccer. And, well, insert game here. I was drawn to the sport around 1996, when it celebrated its centenary. I collected anything I could get my hands on, such as these AFL centenary medals from the Herald Sun newspaper. Got the whole set too. I also played Little League and earned some trophies. I was pretty good too. Though, upon returning to it these days after a lifetime of video games, things didn't exactly go as planned. Ultimately, the thing that put me off footy forever was the way my favourite team, the Geelong Cats, lost so many grand finals in such a short amount of time, between 1989 and 1995. You know, I think it taught me anger, frustration and disappointment, just like some of the Nintendo games I played back then. So it was definitely interesting to see the two put together, which brings us to the next stage of our story, Beam Software. Beam Software were the first successful Australian video game developers, responsible for classics such as the Horus Trilogy on the Speccy, Nightshade for the NES, and the incredible Shadowrun for the SNES. In the early 90s, Beam sought to develop its own titles based on popular Australian sports, such as AFL and its sister game, International Cricket. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get to that one someday too. In order to do this, they launched the publishing label Laserbeam, effectively becoming one of the first companies outside of Japan to obtain a license from Nintendo to produce games for the NES. They were the pioneers of Australia's video game industry. Their story is an interesting one too, best left for a separate video I think, so keep an eye out for that definitive story on this little known company in the coming months, but for now, I hope that clears up the confusion surrounding Beam and Laser Beam. So reflecting on everything I've just said, how do you take all that and turn it into a Nintendo game? Let's find out. By the way, many thanks to Tyler Swan from Bendigo Gaming Tech, who got my copy to me in record time. Legend. In she goes. Hitting Start presents you with three gameplay modes. Single match, where you play one game against either the CPU or a friend. Season, which pits you against either the CPU or up to six players in a series of matches leading to the grand final. And finally, kick to kick, where one or two players can brush up on ball skills and just run around getting used to the mechanics. 
I highly recommend new players try this mode first. Anyhow, I'm going to take a shot at the cup and see if I can make up for all that disappointment I felt in the 90s. Here you choose from 18 different teams, most of which are named after real clubs from the AFL's 1991 season, with a few fictional ones thrown in for good measure, such as Canberra, Darwin and Hobart. I reckon Darwin should have their own AFL team by now. Anyway, I'm going to choose Geelong because that's my hometown. Next you're given a choice out of only six basic colours, with none of the usual club emblems or clothing patterns available. This means Beam were either unable or unwilling to obtain a license from the AFL. That's a real shame, but at least you can tell who's meant to be who. Regardless, all the teams seem to have different skill levels that change with every match. Sometimes you're sticking it to them, and other times not. Now this next screen is really interesting. Sid loves Nancy. That's gotta be a reference to Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen, who were a tragic punk rock love story. I've always wondered if some of the Beam software staff were into the early Melbourne punk scene. Some of the art in Shadowrun seems to reflect it. Elvis lives. That's what I thought. Could these be initials from the developers? DB, Darren Bremner, PM, Paul Mitchell, SA, Sue Anderson. Some of the rest don't seem to... GH. Oh my God. Those are my initials. The government! Each match is made up of four three-minute quarters, and at the end of each one, teams will switch goal lines. There are several different gameplay perspectives. The first is the bowl-up sequence, which occurs at the start of every match in the centre of the field. It also occurs whenever the umpire can't determine who has possession of the ball. Here you must tap the ball to your teammates with A, or punch it downfield with B. This is known as the ruck. The best way to do this is to tap the D-pad in the direction of the ball as soon as it hits the ground, then hit B at the top of your jump. It requires perfect timing and it will help you determine which side of the field you're aiming for. Following this, the perspective scales back overhead, giving you a wider view of the play field as you strive to get the ball into your 50 metre forward line for a shot at goal. The character you currently control has a white arrow above his head. When you kick or pass the ball, the CPU attempts to locate the player closest to it, but sometimes it's slow to react. It would have been nice if you could cycle between a couple of the players near the ball with the select button, but oh well. Anyway, the game of Aussie Rules footy requires you to gain possession of the ball and then dispose of it in the direction of your goals by running, kicking, handballing, marking and tackling. You pass it to teammates often and the game moves along at a fair pace. The third and final gameplay perspective occurs when the ball spills over the field's boundary line without being kicked. Out of bounds. Ah, there's some nice sampled speech for us. Here, the umpire throws the ball into the ruckman to compete for the tap out. I'm no good at these boundary line throw-ins. Can't seem to get the timing right. Whoever gains possession of the ball runs slower than everyone else, allowing opponents to chase them down for a tackle. When your opponents have the ball, you need to chase them down and hold the B button while pushing the D-pad in their direction to perform the tackle. This will knock the ball from their hands and give you possession. While tackling, you feel a slight resistance and get dragged back, so make sure to recover quickly. Be sure to keep the pressure up as it has an effect on the CPU's accuracy and movement. The way you dispose of the ball is also very important. You really need to think about what moves to use and when, so there's a fair amount of strategy involved. There are definitely moments where a hand pass works better than a kick, that's for sure. When your player gets possession of the ball and a teammate is close by, tap the A button in their direction to hand pass it to them. Make sure to switch directions on the D-pad as soon as the ball leaves your hands, otherwise the target switches and your teammate will end up running away from the pass. While moving about the field, use the B button with the D-pad to kick the ball towards your goal line. Once again, make sure to let go of the D-pad as soon as you kick and try to locate the next player as soon as possible so you can use him to compete for a mark. Three things factor into marking. Firstly, player position. Secondly, the height of the ball at moment of impact. And lastly, whether or not you're pressing the A button to jump for it or standing still under the ball's tiny shadow. Sometimes if you time it right, you can take a screamer. After a successful mark, the player has the option to step back and take a kick, or play on by immediately hitting the D-pad to run. Once you're within the 50 metre line, you may take a shot at goal. 
The way you do this is initially very frustrating until you get the hang of it. As you approach the goals, you'll notice three white lines appear at the bottom of the screen. I call this the balance bar. The lines on the left and right scale in and out as you get deeper into your forward line, while the thick line in the center moves left and right. The idea is to get as close to the goal as possible and press the B button when the line is close to the center, which is incredibly hard to do while you've got half of Australia breathing down your neck. In these moments, you need to focus on dodging opponents and learn to use your peripheral vision to line up your kick. If you manage to get right in front, the cursor will freeze in the center for an easy goal. If you're much further away, the balance bar moves so quickly and it's so small, it's impossible to get it right. And at these moments, I just close my eyes and hope for the best. Use the fast loop. Yo, beauty! If you kick while the middle line is to the left or right of the balance bar respectively, your kick will swing in those directions. When scoring, a kick between the two middle post nets you a goal, which is worth six points. Kicking through the left or right post nets only one point. These are called behinds. Check out that cool little animated goalie. At this point, the opposing side gets to kick out from the goals or may play on by running out of the goal square. Be careful here or this happens. For fuck's sake, kick it to someone on your own team when you're fucking kicking out of fucking back pocket. Fuck, missed again. It's so hard to aim. You could have kicked that, huh? I'd love to see you come down here and try it, mate. Just try and play AFL at this level. Well, he sure showed me. One of the coolest things about the game happens when you kick the ball outside of the game's boundary line. Out of bound, on the ball. It's classic and iconic. Anyway, this gives the opposing side a free out kick. Out of bound, on and the ball. get used to it, because it's going to be happening a lot. Out of bound, on the ball. I never really noticed this as a kid, but look at the umpire's face. Those cold, dead eyes. He sort of looks like Frankenstein's little brother. After a while, the siren sounds and you get a little quarter time screen showing score and commentary. This occurs three times every match. Hey, isn't that Brian Taylor? We just call him BT. Look at his old school haircut. Shocking. That microphone looks like a dick. Alright, it's a dick. End of story. Yeah, I know. I've got a dirty mind. The mechanics and gameplay are quite balanced, if a little touchy, and require some getting used to. It's responsive, and eventually you pick the timing up. It is an enjoyable game, especially in two-player, because generally you're both so crap you'll give each other a chance to learn the mechanics. The graphics are well drawn, but being a sport game, there's not really much else they could do about the green colour of the field, which does get old after a while. I wish they could have changed the colours up a little bit for different matches, but oh well. At least the sprites are decent looking. I do like the small rotating football as it bounces around the field. The sound's pretty average. Most games are played in complete silence, with music only playing at quarter time and at the beginning and end of each match. The effects are great for the humble 8-bit nest though, with convincing crowd and whistle effects, and of course the classic out of bounds on the fall voice sample. I wonder whose voice it is. In the end, Aussie Rules Footy is a one-of-a-kind video game. It's an Australian exclusive that was made in Melbourne, Victoria, and it's one of our own homegrown legacies. One of the greatest football games I've ever played. And the final siren goes, and that's it. Nice game. Now, let's get that Premiership Cup. I'm still here. I'm just a fool for the Holy Grail. All right, grand final time. Geelong versus Essendon. Let's go. You're going down, Essendon. 
right from the fucking tap out. They're just way harder than every other team. I know it's the grand final, but this is fucked. Come on, cats! Come on! Yeah, mate. Yeah, that was sick as. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Yeah, all right, ready? It's mine now. Yep, yep. Oh, oh. Oh, the fuck did on you the miss pool. from right in front, you fucking idiot? I'm getting sick of your head. Oh, I'm telling you, get him. Oh, you fucking lucky you missed. For fuck's sake, I'll just stop him. I can't seem to fucking kick it to where I want it to go. For fuck's sake, this fucking tenure. Yes, I'm finally gonna get one. Ah! Out of bounds, on the pool. Oh fuck, it's making me angry. No games on earth make me as angry as fucking AFL games. I got one! I got a goal! Yeah! Go the cats! Go! Go cats! Yeah! Fuck. Oh mate, it's a tight game. Fuck! Come on, come on, go, go, catch, go! Out of bounds. It's like they know that all I gotta do is get two goals and I win. Come on! Oh, I give up. You can't even fucking stop them. You're just getting blitzed. Fucking, they just run through you. Just, just did it. Just shafted. Just nothing but knob. That. I don't know about you blokes, but I can't bear to lose a match like that! We were terrible in that first quarter! Absolutely bloody disgraceful! Yeah, yeah, fantastic effort! But where does a fantastic effort get us? It doesn't get us nothing! We don't get a point, they don't give us anything! They don't give us something and just for getting close, we don't get diddly squat! Well, we just can't accept it! I don't know about you blokes, but if I see one man getting a pat on the back for coming second, I'll spill up! Yeah. Geelong's my team, and they always will be. Anyway, thanks for stopping by. Hope you enjoyed the show, and if you did, please like and subscribe and help us to grow. That way, I can produce more and more content. Um, special thanks to all of the awesome people who share my show around, such as Gamers Galaxy and the Australian video game communities. You blokes are legends. Um, and a huge shout out and thanks to Nest fans on Facebook. Especially you, Nest Dave. Retro buddies forever. Uh, have I forgotten anyone? Oh yeah. How about me mate Jake McCauley from the UK? He's a gun. Go check his stuff out. He's a funny bloke. He does great videos and they're epic and enormous. Thanks so much for your help lately, mate. You're a legend, eh? And, uh, that's it. Hope you just come back and I'll see you around more often. And we'll see you soon. Cheers. <laughs>